Hello everyone, Carlos here. So on today's video, we're going to be talking how can we use Sysmon to track registry actions. That means when somebody creates a key, deletes a key, renames a key, same thing for the values. And I have to be honest, this is one of those event types that have great value. Uh, when we start looking at some of the threat intel out there, specifically for different markets, for manufacturing, for medical, one of the things that we're going to see when we map everything over to MITRE is registry is one of those top 10 in most cases, uh, depending on the market where attackers are going in on a Windows system and they're modifying the registry in one way or another to be able to get persistence, to disable controls, to privilege escalate. You see this, the registry inside of Windows is kind of like this giant database of settings and it is used heavily heavily by the eos let's for example let's say that we want to load a driver one one of the ways that we would do this is that we would create a service of driver type where does that get created inside of the registry same thing for the services that control your edr as well as other applications so let's say that we want to persist we can create a service there Let's say that we want to maybe privilege escalate or run as another user specifically on the box. We can find a service on the machine whose registry key we have permission to write to and we modify that registry key so it launches another application that is not the service. Same thing if we want to disable a service. Uh, for many times, for a very long time, one of the things that we've seen is that there are event types for when a service gets created and started. So one of the common techniques is just to create the service inside of the registry and just reboot the machine. Uh, same thing for some of the modern Windows event logs. So when we look at the channels, there's this registry key called enable, where we can set a value and we can disable specifically uh, modern events inside of Windows. So let's say that we're going to be taking some WMI actions and we want to disable WMI operational and we're admin, we can disable WMI operational and take our actions and then just re-enable the log. So we can be even more stealthy on the machine. So as you can see, there's a very large plethora of different techniques that we can take against the registry. Now, one of the other things that I really like from the side of us building detections and stuff like that is that this is one of the easiest ones that we can actually test for, that we can write a bunch of scripts to test different detections for because it's the registry, we're just writing and deleting those keys and modifying them. So it makes it very, very, very easy for us to do automated testing, which is really important. One of the things that I've been seeing out there when I'm working uh, and helping out the IR team is that many times people do have some detection, some collection, but nobody's testing them. And we're going to see specifically with Sysmon or as I was prepping for this video, I actually found one of those cases where um, seems that nobody tested for one of the event types. So let's go over to my VM so we can dig deeper into uh, this type of event type. So right now I'm in the Sysmon community guide that I wrote, and we're looking specifically at the chapter for registry actions. One of the things that we're going to see is that for the registry, we have three different events that we can track. We have event ID number 12 for when a registry object's added or deleted. We have event ID 13, which is when a value has been set. We have event ID 14, when a registry object has been renamed. And as I mentioned there, the registry has been available to us since Windows 95 and D4. So it's been used for a very long time. Now, one of the things that we need to put in, or take into consideration is that uh, many times we're going to be working with different paths. So it's going to be HK local machine, HK user, HK local machine classes, or HK local machine current control set. And then we have multiple numbers. Uh, when it comes for us to write our rules, we need to, for the target, specifically when we refer to target object, we have to focus on this abbreviation. So we're going to be using HK local machine system current control set. Now, each one of the different events have, I would say, kind of like the same template with some slight modifications. 
The main ones that we are going to be focusing, or at least the main ones that I've seen that I use the most as I'm writing multiple detections, is image and target object, where I'm tar the target object is that complete path of the registry key that is being modified or worked on. In the case of value, as part of the target object, that value is also included there. And we include some of the details of what was added into that registry key uh, when we're working with values. And then when there's a rename, we get the old name and the new name. Sadly, um, yeah, I found out that this specific event type is broken. It's not been working in the recent versions of Sysmon. Um, I'll be sending an email or opening a forum topic on it and see if Microsoft addresses this in the next release. But at least for in the case of renaming, um, I couldn't get it to work specifically with renaming registry keys or renaming values. So another thing that we need to consider is that when you see anything that is default, it's going to be default between parentheses is going to be that one that gets set. Also, when we're working with HK current user, uh, the way that Sysmon locks all of this, and we're going to see in the examples when I start working on those, it includes this SID. And since the SID is actually included, we need to use contains and end with as our operators for target object. So let's go over here and look at a configuration that I've created. Now in this configuration, what I'm looking for is contain sysmon and target object. So anything in the path that contains the word sysmon is going to be logged. So let's apply this configuration right now to this machine. So I'm going to do sysmon, let's see, and then registry. I'm going to confirm my configuration as always. And we can see here it contains a value sysmon. So let's create a key right now. So I'm going to do new item H key current user software. I'm going to call it sysmon demo. It got created. I'm going now to set a value for this one. So I'm going to do set item property. The path is going to be H key current user software sysmon demo. And I'm going to give it a name, and the name is going to be my value, and we're going just to give it a value and the value is going to be number 10, just so we can put a number there. So that got set. So let's look at the events. What I did here in the event viewer is that I created a filter specifically for event ID number 12, 13, and 14, which are the ones for registry actions. As I read, refreshed one of the things that we're going to see hey we see that an object was added and when we look here in this event i was like using the xml value because it's what normally i use when i'm doing filters on multiple sim types all of them go off the xml so here i have my image which is powershell powershell created in hk current user and here you can see we have the set of that user which makes it very hard for us to actually, not hard, I have to, uh, it makes it tricky for us. We cannot use the full path. We have to go by either end with or contains or contains any or contains all. So we have to use those wall cards and we see the user that actually modified this. So we can see here, create key is the action that we have. So an object was added or deleted. Here we have set value. So here we have, we look at the details, that PowerShell created at this path, target object here, you can see at the end my value, a D word value of 0x000a, so a in hex is one. So we can see, uh, or 
or in this case, sorry, uh, it's hex for 10. So I added the 10 value here uh, to this machine. So we can see we can capture some of that information that was set there. Here we have other ones here. Uh, and I actually captured me setting the configuration in this case. So probably I already had that set. So as you can see, yes, Sysmon was actually setting its different configuration values. Those were being saved. Now, when we look here, one of the things that we won't see is that full configuration being saved. And it is something that we need to take into consideration. Sysmon is not going for very large values. It's not going to store those. I've seen this specifically with binary values. So you only get a reference that, hey, this was modified. What was there, you will need to do some registry forensics. There's a very nice book on registry for forensics written by Gartland. Uh, I'll put a link to his book. And it is a very good book when it comes to registry forensics. And he includes other tools where you can find different IOCs. So let's do something. Let's do a rename. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do rename item. And we're going to set the path to HK current user software sysmon demo. And we're going to rename it to new name sysmon sysmon test rename and if i do an ls for hkey user software we have here sysmon test rename so as you can see i renamed the registry key and the value for that we set still there if we go here into the event viewer. Okay, so now that I'm here, I'm going to do a refresh. And as you can see, sadly, there's no event 14. So again, as you guys can see, we do get quite a bit of information there. What is the user? What was set? What was deleted? We get the action. We get what object was targeted. Um, Sysmon Modular has a great series of examples here where you can go through it and you're going to see several excludes for some of the other rules. You're going to see includes for specific actions that attacker can be taking on the system just to be stealthy, to gain persistence. So those are really useful for you to get started. Again, this is one of those that you're going to leverage depending on the threat intel that you're actually using. And it's one of those that you can easily test. And as we can see, you do need to test. As we saw, renames not working for some reason or another. I really don't know why. Um, but yeah, testing is important. <laughs> so I hope that you guys found this information useful. And again, thank you for watching the series. See you next time.